All right, how did you do? Did you have any challenges or did it get pretty simple? Let's take a look at how I approached this. So lab 8A, and before I do that, I want to back up. I'm going to start again by going to scripted REST APIs. In fact, I'm going to go to the history and find my REST API that said record finder in it. Oh, there it is. I've got it in my history. So easy to find. I'm going to create a new resource. Now, the grouping, I put a whole bunch of REST resources, different endpoints under one REST service. And how you choose to group these is up to you. I don't necessarily condone one REST service per endpoint because you can take advantage of that resource path on the scripted REST resource on these child records, the relative path, excuse me, to group these together. You may have a number of them per application. You may have different functionality within that one application. So maybe you put all your posts together, all your gets together, or all your things that operate on change records versus change tasks. Totally up to you how you want to do this. But REST services and REST resources give you complete control over what information is being accepted, generated, and returned. That's why I like scripted REST resources a lot. So let's show you my answer by going to new, we'll call this lab 8A. And down in my relative path, it's going to be lab 8A. This is a get. I'm just asking ServiceNow for information. And my script over here should look pretty familiar. I'm going to skip past the first part and just show you this looks a lot like lab 7B. Go get a list of records, build an array of objects. Okay, nothing surprising there. The new part is in here where I'm using query parameters to get the table and the limit. This is just very similar to what I showed you in the learning exercise in lesson 36. And then at the end, do a set body answer. Here is your array of objects. That's really all there is to this. Let's copy that, put it into my REST response, or my, my, my script section, excuse me, save that, get rid of that REST API Explorer, but bring open a new one down here, explore the REST API. And it says, congratulations, it's Record Finder Lab 8A. Don't, and here are my query parameters. Table name, all right, according to my API that I made up, <laughs> is table name and limit. So I'm going to put in table name, incident, and whoop, label name, or excuse me, <laughs> limit is, let's just do five records. And I send that off and it says, according to this URL that you asked for, it processed fine. There were no system errors. I didn't get a 500 something. 500 means you got weirdness in your code, in which case your response body will have an error message. And look at that. My response body has, there's my array. Nicely formatted output of my array in my result object. So again, if the third party uh, application wants to access this, it would be result dot or result sub zero, one, two, because result is now an array rather than just an object. So you have to be careful of how you read this. It says result is an array and it contains an array of objects. So result sub zero dot display value would be number 60, this one. That's how you would get at those elements from uh, say another JavaScript application. Your mileage may vary if you're using something else, but I have successfully built that. Now, lab 8B is going to be a slight challenge even more. We're really putting all, our, all of our learning knowledge to power on that one. So join me on the next video as I tell you what we're going to modify again for this one. Take care.